almighty and everlasting God, given us to thy servants by the confession of a true faith, to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and the power of the divine majesty to worship unity. We beseech thee that you would be, keep us steadfast in the faith and no more defend us from adversities. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hymn 94. Him while shepherds watch their flocks by night, while seated on the ground, the angel of the Lord came down and glory shone around. We turn now to Peter Migley, it's an introductory outline by Reform Books Online regarding Peter Martyr Vermigli's commonplaces, which I can't find anywhere. Um, if anybody knows, please send me a note here. <clears throat> Brought to you by Reform Books Online. Editor's introduction, a general distribution of the whole work. It's sort of like an outline, a summary of Martyr's work. Second price, part Christ the Redeemer under the law. Third price, grace offered to us in Christ and its fruits. And fourth, Outward Means of Fellowship with Christ, page 19. It's only 23 pages. Uh, editor's introduction. Peter Martyr's Vermiglii. Peter Martyr Vermiglii became a standard common textbook of the Reformed systematic theology for the second generation Reformation. This work translated into English, however, has remained buried in the archives of Europe until now, 2015. I can't find it. Maybe I, at least on archive.org and Google Books. Uh, if I, I don't know. Maybe it's in Kindle. Maybe it's online. This point, I'm looking for electronic versions more than putting more paper on the shelves. Well, the commonplaces are not fully available on the internet, this edited table of contents, it is hoped, will spur interest in and give one taste for them. Commonplaces, with quotes around it, who are something of a genre of their own during the Reformation. One of the main methods of teaching by the Reformers was by writing running commentaries. Uh, we've got people coming up here for quotes and estimates. On this and that, I may have to break in. Upon reaching a significant biblical text, the author may divert into a short or sometimes lengthy diversion upon a hot topical issue of the day. Hence, these important biblical verses and the discourses touched upon them became known as the commonplaces. As these gems, revealing the mind of the esteemed author on important matters, Oh, I think my wife, yeah, my wife will be Were scattered throughout all their writings. Later editors often collected them together to form something of a systematic manual of the Protestant faith. For Migla E, 49, 1499. So he's 10 years younger than Cranmer, 1562. The Italian reformer who also greatly influenced the continued reformation in Strasbourg, Germany, and England, had with little prodding from Theodore Beza, expressed his doctrine or his desire for such a book of his to be published, though the first edition in Latin did not see the printing press until 1576, 14 years after his death. Robert Masson, editor and Huguenot minister, arranged the commonplaces Got a footnote here. The complete work is available for those who have full access to early English books online, which is usually only at select universities. The table of contents was edited from Martin's 1583 London edition, not simply from EEBO's table of contents, which is not as accurate. The page numbers correspond to that edition. See therefore any inquiries into the original text. EEBO's table of contents is very limited in its readability, hence the need for this contemporary edition. 
the addition of significant labor and value, the reworking of the text into a substantially new text with introduction, new formatting makes the copyright edition fully within copyright laws. See Wikipedia for life. It is on Google Books here. Following the pattern of John Calvin's Christian Institutes in four books. In 1583, Anthony Martin translated Laca Communes in, or Communis into English and greatly added to it. From Vermiglii's writings, from what is this contemporary edition? Fifteen editions in all spread throughout Europe. To, to feed more on Vermiglii's thoughtful and solid expositions of biblical teaching, purchase a few or more of his ten volumes that currently comprise his incomplete works translated into English, which set does not include his commonplaces as they were compiled by another at Heritage or for Reformation Heritage Books at Amazon. Please enjoy the table of contents to Vermiglii's commonplaces. So I guess which work of a couple of footnotes, which work of Calvin's was arranged after the Apostles' Creed. This may be discerned in the commonplaces as well. Thus it appears a general distribution of the whole work and the prefaces to each part. General method of distribution of the whole work. Since all divinity wherein man's chief good is expressed is accomplished in the true knowledge of God. And that now we acknowledge God to be partly the creator of the world and partly a redeemer in Christ. First, those things which belong to the knowledge of God, either by the guiding of nature, or by the doctrine of scriptures are to be considered. Secondly, we must declare how God our redeemer in Christ appeared to the fathers, first under the law, and afterward to us in the gospel. <clears throat> Howbeit, since it is necessary that we receive the grace offered us in Christ, lest it be frustrated in us, it behooves us besides this to have a respect unto the fruits and effects of grace in us. And last of all, we must consider the outward means or helps where God brings us into fellowship of Christ which method we, having followed, have distributed all these places into four parts. The first part, albeit that the knowledge of God is naturally engrafted in the minds of all men, and is also made the more manifest by the things created, yet such is the corrupt nature of men as it shortly vanishes away, unless we acknowledge God as he is in the Holy Scriptures, and to avoid all illusions, illusions and slates of Satan. And in the scriptures beside diverse praises of God, first he must be considered in trinity and unity, and secondly as he created heaven and earth and moderates all things by his providence. Wherefore, in the first part we have set down those places which pertain to the setting forth of those principles of the end of good and evil among Christians. Chapter two of the natural and the knowledge of God by his creatures. Whether there be any yet, <coughs> no, not God, and after what sort they be inexcusable. Chapter three of the prophecy and the name, causes, definition, and effects thereof, of prophets and the difference of them, and of the means to discern the truth from the false. Chapter 4, Visions, and how and how much God may be known of men, as well in this life as in the life to come. What manner of visions the Father had, and whether God or only angels appeared unto them. Chapter 5, of Dreams, and Causes, and Effects. 6, of Holy Scriptures, and the Dignity and Profit of them, and of the means to understand them an exhortation to the reading of Holy Scriptures of history. Chapter, whether young and incontinent men should be excluded from hearing the word of God. Chapter eight of lots of Urim and Thummim. Chapter nine of miracles and the definition and difference of them. 
whether it be lawful for the godly to desire miracles, and why there be none in our age. Chapter 10, whether it was Samuel or the devil that appeared unto Saul, of the nature, knowledge, power, apparitions, and answers of devils, whether how far devils do know things to come, whether they know men's thoughts of the power of devils and their strength in doing things, what bodies they assumed in themselves, of the illusions called Lamiae and Pusai and such like, whether it be lawful to take counsel of the devil, to use his help, whether we may use enchantments to take away mischiefs, chapter 11, of a good intent, zeal, prescription, and custom, the means to know which is good zeal and which is bad, Chapter 12, of the name of Jehovah and sundry attributes of God, the Holy Trinity, that Christ being God, that the Holy Ghost is one God with the Father and Son, of much the remembrance of wrath and the effect of repentance is attributed to God. Chapter 13, of the creation of all things, the creation of angels, sundry names, visions, assuming of bodies, office, dignity, order, and degree, degrees of man, of the soul, image of God, of paradise, the long life of the fathers, of giants, of felicity in general, of pleasure, of honor, of riches, of contemplation, that virtue is not the chief good, the causes of felicity. Chapter 15 of Providence of God, whether God be the author of sin, of three sorts of God's working about his creatures, of the will and the will effectual. Chapter 17, how it may be said that God does repent and does tempt. How it may be said that the kingdom of Saul should be reestablished forever, the same being appointed to the tribe of Judah. The second part comprehends the commonplaces which do express the natural corruption of all mankind by the fall of Adam, the which corruption of human nature is the more clearly discerned by opposing it to the justice of God, which is expressed in the law. Yet so, nevertheless, as by the acknowledgement of sins, we are brought to receive the grace of God, which was made manifest first to the fathers, of the Old Testament, and then when the time was come in the gospel, afterward is set forth unto Christ the Messiah. Chapter 1 of sin, original, and depraving of the whole nature, by what means the corruption thereof is derived, derived into posterity, that sin is the cause of death, and by sin all things subject to vanity of free will, of voluntary, not voluntary, of man's election, of making choice, of the law of philosophy and comparison thereof, especially moral with divinity, necessary rules for the interpretation and keeping of the law. Chapter 4, the first precept where it is entreated of idolatry and sundry kinds of idols, whether it be lawful for Christians to dwell among infidels, whether it be lawful to have teachers which believe not in Christ. Chapter 5, the second precept, which concerns images, their beginning, antiquity, and cause, whether it be lawful to express Christ, the angels, and other creatures, whether it be lawful to place images in churches of cherubim and teraphim, of human sacrifices, of the establishing of the second commandment, whether the child shall bear the iniquity of the father. The third pre pre precept of sanctification of the name of God and generally of oaths. <laughs> Chapter 7, the fourth precept, sanctifying the Sabbath day. Fifth, of honoring superiors, comparison of parents of magistrates, dominion of the wife over the husband over the wife, of ambition, desire of praise, of flattery, sixth precept of friendship, homicide, whether Elias did well on killing of the Baalites, parasites, sword play, whether it's lawful for any man to kill himself, 
of repelling violence, cursings, imprecations, bannings, whether lawful to rejoice over an enemy's overthrow of a curse, a shunning of revenge, of shamefulness, temperance, mercy, and nemesis, cruelty, envy, emulation, and revenge, seventh precept, matrimony and concubines, pol polygamy, barrenness, lawful to for children to marry without the consent of parents, raping or violent taking away, whether marriage be lawful in sundry religions, of degrees forbidden in marriage, dispensation for marriage, dowries, divorce, whether matrimony is a sacrament, chapter 11, of whoredom, fornication, and adultery, of bastards, idleness, punishments of adultery, whether the man or woman do sin more grievously in adultery, reconciliation of man and wife, wife, wine and drunkenness, dances, garments, eighth, not committing theft, beneficence and hospitality, Benefiting of unthankfulness, plays and pastimes, gentleness and affability. Ninth precept, not bearing false witness of the contumely, suspicions, mocking, taunting, deceit or guile. Whether guile be lawful for the rooting out of idolatry and heresies, dissimulation, truth and a lie, modesty's sake, fable and apology. The last precept against lusting, comparison between sins, charity, salutations, loving God with the heart, whether the first motion should be counted as sins. Chapter 15 of the use and abrogating of the law. 16 of the likeness and unlikeness of the new league or covenant. 17, Christ in his manifestation in the flesh by what means he performed all the parts of our salvation. Chapter 18, that'd be interesting, exposition upon the 12 articles of the Christian faith. Third part, after these things do follow the causes and general means whereby we are both put and retained in the possession of Christ and salvation. And there also be showed the effects of Christ remaining in us all which things the places follow we do, do plainly teach to it the places of predestination and calling of faith and hope of adoption justification christian liberty of repentance christian life patience afflictions prayers and finally eternal life chapter one of eternal predestination whether God would destroy any man. Chapter 2 of the calling of God of grace, how grace and works are unto eternal life. Chapter 3, faith and the certainty thereof, of security, whether true faith be separated from charity, what union the go godly have with Christ, of adoption, Christian hope. Chapter 4, that of justification is of faith only, not of works. Chapter 5 of Peace, Bondage, Christian Liberty, Offense, Conscience, and Choice of Aids. Chapter 6 of Vows in General, Nazareth, Jephthah, Rechabites, Peregrinations. 7 of Marriage and Soul Life, especially Ministers. That chastity is no common gift of God. Of Repentance, Contrition, Confession, and Satisfaction. Chapter 9 of Works of Super Arrogation and Imagined Perfection of the Papists of purg purgatory and papistical indulgences. 10, tears, fasting, and la of watches. 11, of Christian life and sundry vacations. <sighs> Chapter 12, of liberality and magnif magnificence. I don't know if that's munificence. Of fortitude, mortification, the cross, and affliction of flight, whether David did well in fleeing to the Philistines for fear of Saul, whether holy men were inferior to the ethnics in abiding adversities, holy prayers, whether prayers be the causes of the benefits of God. 
how God will say them, that he will not give contrary of the abuse of the foreign language of music and mater, chapter 14, death and consolation of the godly, mourning for the dead, burial, the souls, souls loose from the bodies do not sleep, of wandering spirits, chapter 15, resurrection, 16, taking up of Elijah and Enoch and the return, 17, the end of the world, last judgment, that all men's glory in heaven shall be alike of the change of all things. And on to page 19 of 23. The fourth part, how be the Holy Ghost be the only bond that we have with Christ, the most assured pledge of our salvation and undoubted preserver of all things. Yet uses he thereunto diverse and those external instruments for into the church he gathers the elect by the ministry of the word and sacraments, and also by the bond and help of discipline he begets us unto Christ, and feeds and preserves us unto eternal life. Chapter 1 of the Holy Catholic Church, sundry ministers calling to the ministry, dignity and contempt of ministers, office of pastors, efficacy of the ministry, Mighty Simpleness of Ministry, Chapter 2, of Receiving Rewards, Gifts, Offices, Especially by Ministers of the Church, of the Immunity of Ecclesiastical Men. Chapter 3, Whether There Be Two Heads of the Church, One Visible and Another Invisible. Four, Ecclesiastical Laws, an Exposition of the Place to Obey is Better Than Sacrifice, Traditions, Discerning of Spirits, Authority of councils, fathers, and canons. Ecclesiastical, class, ecclesiastical discipline, chapter 5. Excommunication, order, and comeliness in the church. Of temples and their ordinances. Of schism, whether the professors of the gospel be schismatics. Chapter 7, of sacraments in general. Circumcision. Chapter 8, of baptism. Baptizing of infants and the holiness of them. Chapter 9, Dedication of Temples, the Baptizing of Bells, of Oil, Salt, Spittle, Wax, and other Papistical Corruptions about Baptism, of Papistical Holy Water. Chapter 10, A Treatise of the Lord's Supper, that'd be interesting, with a preface before the same, an epitome of the Disputation of the Eucharist against Stephen Gardner. Oh, I'd like to see that. Wiley Gardner, who does he remind us of? He reminds me of Jim Comey, slick Jim Comey of the FBI. Arrogant to the T, self-righteous, never, never erred and strayed. Chapter 11 of Communion Under One Kind. Chapter 12 of the Mass. Sacrifice, the commonplace of sacrifice, altars. 13 of the Magistrate, difference between civil and ecclesiastical power. 14, the office of magistrates in exercising judgment that the charge of religion belongs to princes, clemency of princes, lawful for my magistrates to let the guilty go unpunished, whether there's law lawful to release punishments were enjoined by laws, executions, hangmen, sanctuaries, of exile and banishment, whether it be lawful for a man to go to law of war or battle. Offenses, spies, treason, whether captives ought to be put to death or saved, of the several combat hand to hand, of nobility, bondage, debtors, occupying of merchandise, of troubles and sedition, whether it be lawful for subjects to rise again against the pr pr prince, whether Jehoiada did right in putting out the lie for the kingdom. That appears to be the end. Yeah, that is of the end, but we still do not have the commonplaces and also his work on Eucharist. Verse 2 of 90, hymn 94. Fear not, said he, for mighty dread had siege their troubled mind. Glad tidings of joy I bring to you and all mankind. Let us pray. Blessing and honor, glory and power.
and to him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Amen. God's